Today's video is a special, extra long documentary exposing David from Unbiased Magic Reviews. In his latest video about my product called Dex, he tells all of his viewers lies. And I don't just come here to expose him, I am bringing the receipts, the proof, the facts, the details to surgically dismantle every single lie he's told you along the way. And if that wasn't enough, I've found evidence of his bias and facts to show you that he did this vindictively. And on top of all that, I have an email exchange between himself and Christian Grace to further cement the proof. If you've ever considered this man any authority or think that he has any credibility within the magic industry, then I urge you to watch every single second of this video before making your mind up about him in the future. If you came here to learn some magic, today isn't the day. Today is the day you learn some cold hard truths. Buckle up, because it's going to get juicy. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever you are in the world. Super quick heads up, if you've come to this video expecting me to teach you one of my magic creations like I normally do, then today is not it. I recommend that if you have come here looking for some creativity and happiness, please switch off. I don't, I don't suggest you watch it, especially if you're watching with young children. This is going to be quite a sour video and it makes me pretty sad that I have to make it at all. So, two second warning, please click off the video. So with that being said, um, if you're still here watching and listening, I have been at a uh, log ahead with myself and my friends about whether I should make this video at all, whether you should be watching this video at all, and whether to bring myself down to this level uh, over a certain thing that's happened in the magic realm recently, in the last few days. And at first I was going to take the high road and not say anything and not acknowledge it, uh, and I was going to let it fizzle out. And I can't do it. I woke up this morning about eight o'clock and this is not the first time I've, I've, I've sort of come to this conclusion about something, but one of the most important things for me as a, as a human, and it's one of the big uh, life sort of lessons that I've taken with me is that integrity is paramount. Nothing is more important to me than integrity. Because if you, you could be a millionaire and if you don't have any integrity, you're a poor man. And it's none, this is not as, this has never been more important to me than it is now because I'm raising a son. And if I can't, if my son can't see a father have integrity and stand up for what's right, then who, who should be really raising him? So I have to make this video for my own sanctity of mind and for the future generation, which kind of sounds a bit crazy to say, but I genuinely, you, this is what I believe. I've released Magic Tricks for 19 years and my tricks get a massive range of reviews on them. The older I get, the more positive reviews I seem to get, and I think that's because I bring more experience and knowledge and I've made more mistakes and I've made correct decisions, but that sort of every failure is a lesson thing and it seems that they're better. In the olden days, I used to get way more worse reviews, um, And but ev almost every magic product, I you know, go and look at any magic review website that has a bunch of reviews on the product page and you'll always find two reviews, one at complete opposite ends of the spectrum. Doesn't matter, right? My, my, my thing that I've always thought about this is that what other people's opinion of me is, is none of my business. And what other people's opinion of my magic is, is also none of my business. The tricks that I create are for me personally. And as long as the trick works, as long as it gets the reactions, doesn't matter, and everything else doesn't matter about it, as long as it creates magic, right? That's the way I thought about it, and if, it, if other people don't like it, it doesn't matter, because they're passion projects. That's why I've never made a response video to a review in the past, because that on its own is just a bit sad. But I can't sit back, I can't sit back and let somebody make a video about something that I co-created with Javier, and tell absolute lies about it. I just can't do it. it. Somebody can go out and talk horrible things, say horrible things about me and my creations. It's their business shouldn't affect me, generally doesn't. Somebody can go out and say lovely things about it, still shouldn't affect me, generally doesn't. But I don't believe people should be allowed to lie with impunity. So in this video, 
I'm responding to a person, and I'm very aware, by the way, of the Streisand effect. I know that by me making this video, he's already getting a small win because he wants to grow his channel, and there's a big difference in, in channel sizes. So I'm very aware that this is playing into his hand by even acknowledging this. But recently a review was put out, I say review, a hit piece was put out on something called Dex, which me and Javier created, which uh, you've probably all seen. And in the video, it's a scathing review, which we joked about, or I specifically joked about many, many moons ago on a few podcasts that I recorded, saying that he pre-recorded the review because this guy has a long history of beef specifically with me and Craig. So um, we knew the negative review was coming, whether it was, you know, made by Rolls Royce or not. So we were expecting that review to come out. What I wasn't expecting was for him to tell categorical lies. And not just lies that are opinions that could be like, well, he's not really lying. Lies that I'm about to just show you black and white proof that the guy lied. And I don't know whether he did that from ignorance. I don't know whether he did that because he's done that a few times in the past. And he's tricked his subscribers into actually thinking that he hasn't, which we're going to cover later on. Or whether he did it knowing that this was going to happen to him. But I'm going to talk to you about the lies, and I'm going to prove each one wrong to you. And I didn't just fact check them myself. I made sure that I wasn't just being overreactive or hysterical. I sent it to a group of fact checkers and even a few people that I don't really get on with just to see if I'm being a bit overzealous. And these are the facts that came back as categorical lies. So with that being said, I'm going to show you all that. There's some other stuff which was borderline, which is like, he's not really lying, but he's definitely, it's a weird bias, dishonest thing to say, but not a black and white lie. So I'm going to show you honestly those uh, elements as well. And then at the end of the video, I'm going to talk to you about something which I think is just really important for all magicians out there to consider and think about, especially if you are one of these magicians that listens to magic reviewers to make your mind up about purchasing a product. And it's the same can be said for any product globally. So I don't want to make this video, but here it is. I can't, I can't continue on letting someone lie. So let's start off with lie number one. Time stamped at 30 seconds in, all other magic reviewers were gifted decks. All of these other mainstream magic reviewers that you see here on YouTube, they were gifted this. Unfortunately, they're compromised. First lie completely. There's a magic shop in Dubai called Brown Bear Magic. No idea who the owner is, I've never met him before. I do know the second person in that review, his name is Midge, but he categorically states that he paid for Dex with his own money to make his own honest views on Dex. But just so we're clear, I did not receive a copy ahead of time. I try, yeah, I know, I bought it from you. I bullied you into like, at least reserving one for me. I also tried to get Lloyd to get me, to give me one, uh, which he promptly said no to, um, which I honestly, I thought we were closer than that, but clearly not, um, right? But in general, I try and be as unbiased as I can about this, despite Lloyd not giving me a copy for free and in advance. So to say all of the, and that's just the first review that I can remember coming out. To say all of the magic reviewers were gifted decks, so you're trying to di dismiss them as if they've, they're bought and paid for uh, like, cr like puppets, is not only false, but it's also really degrading to those guys who do incredible work as reviewers, especially the people that give genuine, genuine unbiased, honest reviews to the detriment of their own channel sometimes. The creators sometimes get really angry with them. So to just wash all of them away with one sweeping sentence is not only pretty disgusting to do, but it's literally a lie. And you can go and see the video where the guy, Midge, pays for it with his own money to buy it. But you might still be on the fence and think, ah, well, uh, you know, he, he is friends with Lloyd. He does know who Lloyd is. If you don't believe me, go and look at the Penguin Magic Review, Penguin product page for Dex, and look at all the reviews on there. I think there's like 12, five or four and a half star reviews so far about Dex. The beautiful thing with Penguin is that 
these purchases, I think minus Andrew Niner, so count it as 11 positive reviews, these have a uh, buyer protection privacy. It means they don't know me, they've bought decks with their own money, and they've left reviews based off watching the full tutorial and practicing what Dex does. So to dismiss every review, even the ones off the Magic Cafe, if you look through those people praising it, but to dismiss everyone as being gifted decks because they don't agree with your opinion, it's not very nice, and it's also a lie. So lie number one. Lie number two, one minute, one second. He accuses Murphy's magic of locking the thread on the Magic Cafe because Murphy sponsors the Magic Cafe. Now, I tried to voice some of my concerns about this product on the Magic Cafe. I was immediately attacked. The whole thread got shut down by the Magic Cafe. It's still locked. It's probably because the Magic Company behind this is their sponsor. That's what I imagine. So, first of all, Murphy's can't get threads locked on the Magic Cafe, and I don't think any other Magic Company has the power to do that either. You'll notice, though, that the thread was locked after you started a mudslinging contest with me and other people. But if they did lock the thread and remove and delete the comments that weren't agreeable to Dex, then why would they have left the comment which you said was the thing you wanted to warn people about laying in full sight. In fact, it's one of the last comments on the thread itself that it's locked, just sitting there in full view. So the logic doesn't even work out, let alone it not being true. So that's line number two. And, I, and maybe, 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 okay, so maybe you could think, ah, Murphy's or other magic companies do pay to have threads locked. They literally, literally don't do that. But just think, if they did do that, they would absolutely not lock it on a comment which was criticizing something about Dex. It wouldn't make any sense. Lie number three, and this is one of the bigger lies that he's told, and one of the most provable lies that he told, at two minutes and 29 seconds. I've just readjusted the camera because I'm gonna have to step back in just a moment. He says, And the creators of this project tell you that when you tell a spectator to think of any card, just tell them to think of any card, but don't think of an ace. So you're already limited in that way. And if you're expecting to use this with any card routines you already do, what are you going to do? Take the aces out of your deck? So there's no really good solution for this because their idea of putting the aces in the front or the back of the index don't work. So you're going to have to put them in the other pocket. So now you're using a two pocket index, really. So unfortunately, that this was very misleading. The first part is true. He says the deck only holds 48 cards. But... We, we do put the aces in there when we want to use them, and we teach you how to use the aces comfortably in decks. The funny thing is, the aces are the easiest cards to get out of decks when you have them in there. But what David lies about is that he said the solution doesn't work. So there's no really good solution for this because their idea of putting the aces in the front or the back of the index don't work. And then he says the other solution is to put the aces in the other pocket, making it a two pocket index. So. He literally says that putting aces in decks doesn't work. I'm going to show you completely openly that first of all, decks, and I'm going to show you how much you're going, well, you're going to be able to make your own mind up. So this is decks, right? I'm taking the aces out like this. This is your decks unit. This is what sits in your pocket. Shock Pikachu face. We designed it to be symmetrical, and we also realized that when people when people named the aces before, and you can even see it in some instances, other magic reviewers specifically have mentioned this, is if you perform an effect and someone names an ace, you do the, you get the reaction at the end, they'll generally say, ah, I bet everyone names the aces. It's a really redundant thing to, to you'd want, to not want to happen because it would kind of make it pointless to use an index when they can name any card and they think you forced them. So it's really important that they never think that you force them. So like I always kind of get like, feel bad if they name the Queen of Hearts. And then generally, even though the Queen of Hearts is in here, generally, I'll say, if they say Queen of Hearts, I will say everyone names the Queen of Hearts. Do you want to make it fair? But this is how we utilize the aces within decks. I'm going to take the diamonds and the hearts, and this is what's taught in explicit detail in the tutorial. I'm going to take the spades and the clubs and put them in hearts, diamonds, clubs, spades order. And we put them in sideways. That means that Dex, for all you owners already know, works exactly the same because your fingers have access on the sides here to find the right values, and your thumb has the same access 
in position on the back here to find the value. So they're not in the way. But when you do want to access the aces, they now become the absolute easiest card in the entire dex unit, cards even, in the entire dex unit to retrieve. So not only saying that, that, that it doesn't work isn't true, but to go even further, they actually become the easiest cards to retrieve from decks. And I'm going to show you right now. I have the hearts on the outside and the diamonds on the inside and the clubs on the inside and spades on the outside. The harder cards with decks are always the innermost cards. So I'll show you exactly how easy it is to retrieve even the difficult aces. So I'm going to stand back. Hopefully I'm in shot. I don't want this to cut away. My pocket's empty. There are no other aces in there. My fully loaded dex is going to go in the pocket with the aces in. The, I have hearts, diamonds, club spades. Diamonds and clubs are going to be the hardest to retrieve. So I'll bring out the clubs because it's on the inner side. Look how easy this is to bring out a clubs. Reach in and I bring out the clubs. To say that doesn't work. So there's no really good solution for this because their idea of putting the aces in the front or the back of the index don't work. When in fact it becomes the easiest card to retrieve is literally a lie. And it's a really easy lie to disprove. So that's lie number three. Lie number four, Dex is cheaply made. And even more concerning than that is that this is very cheaply made. In less than a week of me just practicing with it, mine's already becoming unglued and falling apart. And here's just a very simple small picture to show you the back so you can see how it's coming apart. Insinuating that we cut corners to just make a subpar product in order to make other people profit. Everyone, every single person that's watched the tutorial and has watched the R&D section can see not just that we didn't cut corners, but we went above and beyond and we've been universally praised by everyone that's seen it for how many variations and how much thought and effort went into creating decks. It's the thing that we're most proud of and everyone else is happy about. The materials that we went for are all about the function, nothing to do with the style. We chose function over form 1000% even down to the glue. Every dex unit will eventually start to open up at the bottom because we had to use soft glues. I know you think that this is just a cop-out. We have This is my dex from Miami. We are well aware of this, but it opening, exactly as you showed in your video, if you open it like this, wide up, like that, you can see, if you open it as wide as you want, it does not stop the form or the function of the unit in any way, shape or form. We spent years working on this and not only do we just say that, we made it an important point to include every single variation or as many as we could literally cram onto that table of prototype to end up with this design. And to say that it's cheaply made, this costs more to make per unit because they're assembled by hand than the 3D cool looking printed versions did. So. To even insinuate that we cut corners on this and that we didn't think about everything when it's the one thing we're being universally praised for is, is an out and out lie and it's provable. So that's lie number four. So lie number five, which could be combined with lie number six. So four minutes, 40 seconds in his video and five minutes, 17 seconds in his video. And this is this one give me a bit of a shock actually. From this and unfortunately, it's a very poor design. And in terms of speed, it's actually really slow. When I compare it to like the Cheetah, it's a lot slower than the Cheetah because when you go in your pocket, you have to first find your mark and then you have to count up or down to get to the value. So there is counting. And once you get to the value, you may have to riffle to get to the suit. So there's a lot of things going on. This thing is not easy to use. It's not gonna be easy to learn and it's really slow. When I compare it to the speed of the Cheetah, it's so slow compared to the Cheetah. He says that Dex is poor design, as if like it wasn't thought out, but specifically mentions how slow Dex is. It's, it's a funny one to call a lie on the outset, but, but, but bear with me. Dex is only slow if you don't put the practice in. As we've said openly in all of the advertising of decks, 
this does require practice and it's like saying Usain Bolt's shoes are the fastest shoes in the world. They're not. It depends on who's using it. Dex gives you the ability or allows you with the practice to retrieve any name card at lightning speed is what we say, right? So to say that it's slow when I can literally have a name card pulled out from my pocket, I think the average time that I've put in the second ever video of Dex, which is going to be referenced and linked below to line number five, uh, the average time, so that's taking the fast cards and the slow cards, I think was around 3.26 seconds or something like that. I actually went through the boring process of filming myself doing it back to back six, five, six times, and then worked out the average time score. Hey Siri, pick a card. Choosing. It's the king of clubs this time. King of clubs. I'm we'll doing one more. Alexa. Alexa, pick a card. Alexa, pick a card. Your card is the seven of clubs. Seven of clubs. Uh, so. So, he says that it's slow, and specifically says that it's slow compared to another index out there called the Cheetah. Now, the Cheetah is a brilliant index, but it's not comparable to DEX because it's a two-pocket index. If you're not familiar with indexes, you could have a wide range of different indexes that take up certain amounts of pocket space. Some will use one pocket, which means you're comp packed in more cards into a smaller space, so generally by design they're slightly slower. Two pocket indexes will always be a bit faster because you can have half the deck in each pocket and a bit more room to access cards. And then you can get three pocket indexes and four pocket indexes and even indexes that go inside of your tailor, uh, just a normal suit jacket. The more pockets you use, the faster your indexes will be. That's, that's just the fact of the matter. So to compare a one pocket index to a two pocket index on its speed is a really unconsidered comparison. Realistically, he should have found a single pocket index and compared its speed to that. That's the only true comparison you can make here. It's like comparing a bicycle to a car, both used for two different things in two different scenarios. A bicycle, you'd be faster getting around Amsterdam and New York. A car, you'd be faster getting around the country road. They serve two very different purposes, and they're, they're, compar they're not comparable in many different ways as, men as well as they are being comparable. In this case, they're both indexes, but comparing the speed of a what... Anyway, but, but, that's not even the shocking thing. The thing that he says is that he's been using the Cheetah for well over a year, and it's much faster than Dex. He's making a review the same week that he receives the product, being Dex, where we specifically even include a practice session. We talk about how you need to practice this to get your speed. The more you practice, the faster it becomes. We've been very open about this. He's bragging that something he's been using for over a year is faster than something he got this week and hasn't put the practice into. What? But, okay, I decided to do a bit of research. So I went through his channel and I found his review of the Cheetah. And I want to say, this is no disservice to the Cheetah. It's a two-pocket index. If you, need, if you don't care about using up all your pockets, all your two front pockets, get Cheetah. If you do care about pocket space, get, get Dex or any other one-pocket index. But I decided to watch his demo of Cheetah. And would you believe it? It's slower than Dex when he performs it. So that's not just me saying it. I did the boring work yet again. I did the statistics. I've got the random card generator here and our first card is gonna be the six of spades. So you say to the person, okay, six of spades. As you go into your pocket, and what you're gonna do here is you're just gonna pull out one card just like that. And of course, it's the six of spades. Gives you an idea, you could see the speed of this, right? Let's go with another card. So the next card is gonna be, what the heck? <laughs> Not that, it's gonna be the Eight of Clubs. So we got the Eight of Clubs as the next card. Notice how there's no weird hand motion. My hand is gonna go into the pocket and it's just gonna pull out a card just like that. And of course, it's the Eight of Clubs. Okay, let's go with another one. So the next card that they name, 
Maybe it's the Ten of Clubs. Again, the hand is going to go into the pocket as you are apparently looking for that card. So you're like, you said the, and I said, oh yeah, Ten of Clubs. There it is, the Ten of Clubs. Let's go with another card. Six of Clubs. Notice that they're all clubs for some reason. It doesn't matter anyway. So again, notice the hand goes into the pocket. It's really important too that you notice that there's not none of this like weird hand motion and you don't have to go fast and notice there's no riffling right like most indexes you got to riffle a lot so let's go for another one hopefully it's not another club okay good it's a diamond so in this case it's going to be the three of diamonds so you say to the person okay you want the three of diamonds so you're going to go into your pocket and you're going to pull out one card which of course is the three of diamonds and for comparison, in the video that I posted uh, a month or two after the very first video of decks, where I do one, two, three, four, five, five cards, the sixth card was not timed, uh, back to back without resetting decks, not even trying to go quick, just casually doing it. And you can go and double check both of these statistics and facts yourself. The average time on that was 3.04 seconds. So he's bragging that the index that he's been using for over a year is faster than the index that he hasn't practiced for as long. And yet when you go back and check the facts, it's two seconds slower. And he's bragging about how quick it is in the same video. Also, he says that it it's super fast to take out of four of a kind. And in a comment that he'd left on my YouTube channel last year insinuating that I'd faked a video or edited a video that I, of me performing it to my wife, he said, and how fast can I take out a four of a kind? Well, let's just try it. So I have decks here. You can see it's all set up. I'm gonna, again, not cut the shot, but come down so you can see. I'm gonna place it in my pocket. Again, no other cards in the pocket whatsoever. Hopefully it's gonna focus here. I'll get uh, Siri to name a value and I'll see how fast it takes me. Oh, it's on sleep mode. Name a number between one and 12. Or two and 13. It's eight. Eight, all right? Eight, and I'll make sure not to cut this, okay? I will, I will say that the eights in decks are at the bottom, but because of the way it's situated, every card is in a favorable position. So eight was the value. I'm going to take out all four eights just to show how fast it is. There's all four eights. You can see that's how long it takes me to do that with Dex. In his video, it takes in 4.02 seconds. So let's say that you tell them to name a four of a kind, right? In this case, what's it going to be? In this case, it's going to be the aces, right? That's really common. People like aces. So they'll name the aces as a four of a kind. When you go into your pocket, my tip to you is don't go fast. <laughs> when you get your hand in there, like rummage around, make it look like it's difficult. Because the reality is this, is that if you go into your pocket and you just come out like this, that's not going to look believable. Even though you did get all four aces, that's going to look like that was way too easy because it was way too easy. Anyway, that should give you a really good idea of what the routine looks like. 4.02 seconds, and he's accusing Dex of being slower. Okay, line number six slash seven, because I combined two bits from the last one, so let's go for line number six. Is he says, it looks like a brick in your pocket. And this thing looks like a huge brick in your pocket. No matter what they tell you, you put it in your pocket, you're gonna be like, wow, that thing is huge in your pocket, so it really does look like a huge brick. Now, I made another video on this called The Magic Cafe's Questions Answered where I literally have, I think it's the exact pair of tight jeans on, or skinny-ish jeans on, and Dex in my pocket, and on top of it I have a wallet. And then I take this DS, uh, this old SLR camera and put it in my opposing pocket. And you can literally see for yourselves, for a fact, that Dex does not look like a brick. It looks like a wallet, specifically if you're in tighter fit in jeans. If you wear baggier jeans or looser trousers like the cargo pants that David wears himself in the cheetah video,
then it doesn't look like anything. It's only if you're in tighter jeans that it's designed to look like a wallet because unfortunately, unless you break the space-time continuum and you condense a, using a black hole, everything, it does have to be the thickness of a deck of cards because it's a one deck index and we can't compare it to a two deck index because it's a different subject. And I'll say this, this is deck, and basically just show it now with a deck of cards. Let me grab this. Dex is four millimeters thicker, let me show you, than a box of cards. So if you see from the side there, it's kind of shallow depth of field. Let me open this right up again. Correct. That's a box of cards. Dex, we've measured it. It doesn't it doesn't even look four millimeters thicker in that comparison there, but it is four millimeters thicker than a boxed deck of cards. With a caveat. It's only that thickness in the middle point, in this point here. The rest of it, kind of like a MacBook Air, the rest of it, it tapers right down to a fine edge on both ends. With rounded corners, it literally is shaped like a wallet. But I could talk about this until I'm blue in the face. There's a whole video disproving that it looks like a brick in your pocket. Um, just kind of weird that you would say this stuff when the proof is so visible. Line number seven, there are four core routines taught. Now, when we get to the routines that are taught here, there are four primary routines that come with the decks that they teach you. This is, this is the one that blows my mind. There's nine hours of tutorials, right? There's a combination of, of how to use decks, the slides you need to use decks, the routines taught by myself, Javier, Andrew, and Jake. Then there's live performances and a practice section as well as other ideas. To say there are four routines taught when there's literally, I think we counted 40, you can go on to the Magic Cafe, it's gonna appear on screen, you can see one of the first reviews of somebody who goes through with a fine tooth comb almost every single routine taught. It's a black and white lie. It's bizarre that you even thought that would pass and I can only assume you haven't watched the tutorial. I would normally say that and not believe it to be true, but this isn't the first time you've made a video about another product or other products and given them scathing reviews after not watching the tutorial. Take, for example, Enigma by Christy and Grace. Two days before the, the product launched, you made not a review video based off your friend showing you some of the features and getting a baseline understanding of what you thought was the full app and making it and, and making a full not a review which everyone knows was a review you are a review channel regardless which way you tried to dress it up and you you tore it to shreds and you hadn't even watched the tutorial didn't own the product and hadn't performed it imagine how crazy this would be right to put that into context imagine i went to see uh, a movie and I told my friend about this movie I told them the plot line I secretly filmed some of the movie in the cinema on my phone I showed him a couple of the clips and I said uh, overall I didn't like it it wasn't for me and then that person went off and made a video to almost 5,000 people saying I didn't go and watch the movie I didn't actually see it myself but I do know the rough plot line I know I know what happens in the end I'm not gonna go and see it I'm not I don't like that I think you should save your money that is actually crazy to, to think that you're supposed to be an authority within the magic review realm and, and to speak with any credential and to do something as vindictive as that and then come on and say there's only four core routines taught on the Dex tutorial when anyone, in fact, murphysmagic.com forward slash Dex, the, the, the password is pocket rocket. Go and watch them all. To say that there's only four core routines taught, I know you're going to change the goalposts and say, well, they're the longer routines taught. Let me tell you this. We teach a lot of routines in, in depth. There's a certain point where you understand how the index works, and there's certain things we can just say. For example, if you would like to do uh, an invisible deck routine, now you know how decks works, you can load the card in. That could be one example, but we teach full-blown routines, not just the four core ones, and there's a total of, if you watch the tutorial, you'll come away with 40 tricks. Uh, and not just not just playing card stuff, stuff with other objects as well. It's just bizarre that you do that, and I want everyone to go and prove to yourself. You don't take my word for it. Don't take the fact checkers' words for it. Don't take the reviewers' words for it. Go and watch it. 
it would have been better if they had come up with a different version that the corner actually matches something like maybe if there was like a signature or something that extends into the corner but they didn't come up with that there's actually other much better ideas utilizing a similar principle but these guys didn't think about it and i'm not going to tell them here because i'm not i'm not trying to give them any tips but you know hey i might tell somebody one day such a strange comment to make pinned on the end there because the convincer of the effect is the torn corner that's why so many magicians around the world do the torn corner effect but i did think it was ironic even though it's not in decks that he thought that he could come up with a signature going off into the corner as an extra convincer on top of the convincer. Um, because that is something I actually did create and I have published many, many times. And here's just an example of me teaching it in the dry run lecture for Blackpool. I then later talked it in Blackpool. And it was one of the first things I ever taught as a creative magician or a creator uh, back uh, just after Angle Zero came out from Daniel Madison. So. I didn't include that addition in the tutorial because it, a, a, a convincer on top of a convincer was overkill as it was. But I thought it was quite ironic that uh, he did mention that my idea that I've published was a good idea that he would have liked to have had included. So uh, thank you. Line number eight. Uh, I suppose this could maybe be opinion based, but it's line number eight. He says um, he, he references a lot of the other effects that you'll perform with decks or that are get taught with decks that don't necessarily use playing cards like stuff with billets, uh, clear cards, envelopes. And he says a bunch of other routines that you're never gonna use. And then there's a bunch of other routines that you're never gonna use. Yet immediately off the top of my head, I can think of three posts and I'm gonna try and screenshot them, put them on screen right now of people who love, for example, Dupla decks, which is the idea from Jake Keen using uh, billets in decks to use to do a draw duplication. There's literally three posts of people uh, praising that, setting decks up to use that and saying that they're gonna use it. So to just dismiss these other creators hard work, time and effort by things you're never gonna use, that says more about you and your credentials as a reviewer than it does about decks itself. And I consider that line number eight because the proof is right there. People are using those other routines that you're never going to use. Fact. Okay, line number nine. Not easy to use, not fast. I don't know how many more ways I can be open and honest about decks. You've all seen it. You've all seen how fast it is. It's literally faster than the index of choice that he chooses to praise, and we've proved that. Easy is debatable. But with practice, it becomes very, very easy. It's second nature. It's just a new skill you need to acquire. It's kind of like spinning a coin on a table, right? Very, very easy to do once you've learned it. Decks are the same. We're very open in the ad copy. You, got, you have to practice. You've got to get it down. Once you have it down, it's second nature. To say it's not fast, though, we've already disproved that with your own footage. Lie number 10, and this is the biggest lie of all, and it's really the, the, the bigger picture with, with David at Bias Magic Reviews, is that he says at the end of the video, he, comes at, he came at it from an objective standpoint and he really wanted to like it. Um, everything I'm telling you here is from an objective standpoint. I really did have high hopes for this. And obviously you can see that he didn't come at it from an objective standpoint because he told lies about the product. Either that or he's, he's a lazy reviewer and didn't do the research. Both things are, are terrible things to do. But I thought everything I've experienced from this guy and myself firsthand, whether it's the accusations of people saying that he's a bully or vindictive or that he just got something against me and other people experiencing that from him too, I didn't want to go out and just say that I think he has something against me personally without coming with the evidence to back it up. So I did some research. I went off and did some digging and I didn't have to look very far uh, I suddenly found what the core root of David's personal issue with is with me. And I also found a comment from him which explains the vindictive video where he's just told all these lies about Dex. Let me run through a couple of them. You're going to see them on screen. There's a comment here. Someone's asked, mentioned something about what do they think is bad for magic. Now, as you all know, I create my own tricks and I teach them to people around the world who want to learn them. And I teach them through the medium of YouTube. Years ago, people would have learned this stuff from books, then VHSs, and before that, even centuries before that, you'd learn it in person. 
The world moves on, the world changes. I don't teach other people's material, that's exposure. I do my own tutorials, but that conversation is for another day. But I found this comment really interesting. This was sort of the, the first foray into realizing how deep it goes with David. But he said, above all exposure, someone's asking what they think is bad for magic. All the YouTube channels that are exposing magic openly for subs and views. Number one on that list right now is Lloyd Barnes's YouTube channel. When I called him out, he had nothing to say. I think Roland said it perfectly years ago, and then he put some weird meme troll video up directed at me. Which is kind of odd for an unbiased magic reviewer. If, I, if my MO, if my brand was that I'm unbiased, but then I'm reviewing products from someone that I, I'm openly saying this kind of stuff with, stuff about, it's kind of just morally not right. But there's more. I found another comment. The reason is that magicians have ruined it for themselves, selling secrets cheap. Exactly as you point out, secrets are out in the open. Just look at Lloyd Barnes's YouTube channel. He continually is exposing magic secrets that are not his to teach. That's bullshit. I would be careful who they call wannabes. Many of these people can perform slights and magic better than the pros. Of course, this can be very embarrassing for the pro who decides to challenge the wannabe. And we are going to come to that in a minute. Another comment from a Discord forum. Lloyd Barnes is exposing a lot of magic on YouTube these days. I'm teaching my own... This guy apparently has 25 years of experience in magic and still doesn't understand something that... Even people who are against exposure understand that if you're teaching your own material, it's fair game. I'm, this is from last year. I'm still waiting to see the illustrious Lloyd Barnes card index decks, all hyped up and never released. He has put out various videos demonstrating his index, which is supposedly the best, but they never released it. You have to wonder why. Another one. The worst part of the YouTube exposure is how the magic community has accepted this. Magicians like Spidey and Lloyd Barnes, who know better, but are greedy, they don't care and continue to expose magic and mentalism techniques, methods and secrets that are not theirs to teach slash expose to the general public. It's tricks for clicks. I had an argument with a well-known magician on YouTube about this and their excuse for accepting these guys was that Lloyd Barnes does a great job teaching the material despite the blatant exposure to the masses. Thank you for the compliment and I, I'm teaching my own material, I'm not exposing it. The magic community as a whole need to demand they take down all the videos and stop the exposure immediately instead of welcome them open-armed. I'm not surprised to hear that other YouTubers are teaching magic that clearly isn't theirs for subscription services. Maybe they are hard pressed to pay their bills. Guess that is better than blatant exposure to the general public, but still quite weak. Clearly, this guy has an issue with exposure or people teaching magic on YouTube. To praise himself, to boast that he's unbiased when it comes to reviewing magic, but then has such toxicity and such strong views that are leaning in one direction against a certain topic and then review products from those people that he has these hard views against. There's such a big debate and it's for a different day about teaching magic on YouTube. I'm against exposure. I'm like every other magician in the world. If you expose other people's tricks in any format, whether it's YouTube, books, anywhere, it's abhorrent. You're not a magician. You're not part of the community. But creating and teaching your own material is completely fine. And everyone agrees with that, especially when you teach it correctly. When you see people... I, I went through a phase, and a lot of you will remember this, where I would put something on Instagram, I would put a creation, I'd perform it on Instagram or on YouTube, would never teach it, and then there'd be 30 people performing it the next week, and they would all perform it wrong, and they'd expose it, or they'd get like a, a, an important nuance just off completely, and it, would, it wouldn't it would work. The, the moment I started teaching my effects properly, because they were going to be performed anyway, is the moment people started performing them correctly and getting the correct reaction to them. It's up to me if I want to teach my magic. It's not up to him. But he got, he's got such a vendetta against that, he's got so much hatred about it, that there's no there's no way this guy could be unbiased in his opinions about me or an effect. The irony is this, you accuse me of exposing magic, when the difference between exposing magic is showing how someone else's trick works instead of teaching your own material. Yet the big complaint that you get from people online is that creators 
are sick and tired of you exposing their creations in your product reviews. Whether you try to be snidey and clever by alluding to a secret material that people need to use on cards, or by flat out showing portions of the special props that they don't want other people to see. It's exposing magic, and you're guilty of it, and you're guilty of it more than I am. Don't be a hypocrite. If you're going to live in a glass house, do not throw stones. And just for reference, I haven't put the clips of him exposing people's magic in this video, because then that would make me guilty of exposure like he is. But then I found something which was a smoking gun. Someone commented, Lloyd Barnes is a prolific inventor of magic tricks and posts a lot of his creations for free on his channel. Lux, Cognito and Maxim are a few marketed effects that he brought out. Unbiased comments back, someone should expose his marketed tricks on YouTube to teach him a lesson. This is somebody who brags that he's unbiased, he's honest. He said that he came at the Dex review from an objective standpoint. Yet here he is in black and white, posting on the internet that someone should teach me a lesson. Calling yourself unbiased is as mental as doing this. And Matt, you've all seen like those contrarian news channels or those conspiracy sites, and they call themselves the true news. Anyone that has to say something about themselves so that you think it about them is always a red flag. Unbiased magic reviews should just be magic reviews because the other reviewers are unbiased. Just accusing them blanket statement as we've proved that they're not and saying that they're all bought and paid for and that they're puppets for companies. You can literally see Craig. Craig does not get any trick for free from Murphy's Magic. And you can see that. And the only way we could prove that is for you to look at his bank statements. And Craig is so open that if you actually wanted to do that, he would show you his bank statements. Craig pays for every, he spends thousands every single month on all the products. And that's why you would see that there's products from Murphy's that he's literally destroyed. A company that he releases tricks with. And he literally goes on his channel and destroys them, costing Murphy's money if they've invested in a product that gets terrible reviews. And yet, you don't hear Craig calling himself unbiased because he is unbiased. It's like me saying, hi, I'm Lloyd, I'm not the rapist magician. I'm not a rapist, why would I call myself not a rapist? Calling yourself unbiased and then saying that people should teach me a lesson. Telling lies across the board about my product. Just generally doing vindictive acts like making a video two days before Christian Grace releases first self-created product and self-promoted product just so you could get views on your channel even though you say you don't run your channel to get views if you weren't doing it just to get views you would have waited and and, and this is the thing you knew it was vindictive because you emailed Christian Grace six days after you posted that video four days after the release of the product and this is actually what you said in those emails Good morning, I'm David from the channel Unbiased Magic Reviews on, on YouTube. I recently uploaded a video about my personal opinion on Enigma. I'm really just talking about the app and how it works. I don't own the app, I do not have it. I hope that my opinion does not cause you any problems with your launch, four days after launch. If you think that my opinion is something negative for your product, I can delete the video. I don't want to be the one to blame for many magicians and mentalists losing this release. It is simply my personal opinion. Maybe one day I will have the app and my idea about it will change. Have you seen the title of your own video? Now, Christian never gets into it with people, right? He takes the high road, but he actually responded to you and this is what he said to you. Hi David, I'm afraid the damage seems to have already been done. Putting out that video before my public launch, knowing people would be looking for information on Enigma and pulling attention to your channel seemingly without any regard for the impact it would have on my very first independent release is more than upsetting to me, especially in light of the fact that you do not own the product and have not even tested it. This is a magic review channel, two days before a launch, putting out a video and he hasn't even tried it out himself. And in his own words, he says that any magic reviewer should be doing that. And I can prove that in just a second. Can I just say, in his, in his video of Enigma, he says that it's deceptive marketing because there were no full performances. 
the product was two days before release. It was not out on the market. Could you imagine someone, how badly they would be torn apart for having no credibility if Apple, for example, were going to release a new iPhone and a paper, a newspaper come out or an article came out calling them, saying that they had deceptive marketing practices because they hadn't unveiled all the features and shown the full videos of it because it was two days before launch. Jesus Christ, man. There are unfortunately so many inaccuracies about your observations and it's crystal clear to me that you do not know the full workings of the app and therefore cannot appreciate the effect or its possibilities in full form. Why does this seem to be a trend with this guy? Imagine coming in, riding high, chin in the air, pretending you have all the authority on something as a 25 year experience uh, magician in the industry and you don't get your facts right in your videos. You literally don't watch the tutorials. You don't practice the effects. You don't try them out. And then you get the details wrong. And you've got nearly 5,000 subscribers. And a lot of them in your comments I literally believe you. You're making them out to be fools. You should be ashamed of yourself, mate. At the time of your video, you talked about our teaser trailer as if it is the trailer and speculate that because there are no full performances and trying to hide something, this is completely false and borderline defamation considering the full trailer breaks down exactly what the product is and what we had planned. That's true. That, that did get released on the day that the product was released as that is the norm. Apparently as a mad reviewer, you don't seem to understand that. How can you not understand these, these, these standard practices as a magic reviewer? Get your head in the game. I could sit here and pick apart each point you made and explain why slash how inaccurate they are, but I have little energy left for this. As I can see, as I can't see the benefit of this stage, just so you're aware, this destroyed Christian. I called Christian up out of the blue. I hadn't spoken to him for a while. I called him up just to chat about stuff. He answered the phone. This is not bullshit. He would answer the phone crying on FaceTime. Literally, this man was crying because of your video, because of the effect your video had on him. And you are apparently a health practitioner. And you're going around spending your time making vindictive little videos that are not reviews two days before somebody has put their life's work into an independent release just so you can get views. And you didn't even do your research. Please be aware that despite you claiming your video is not a review, people will always assume it is because of the name of your channel. I wish you had the decency to have approached me before and opened up a conversation. I would have willingly given you the app to test and explore, and you could have made an actual unbiased magic review having all the evidence to hand. And that's the thing, you could have still done an unbiased video if you'd been given the app. Just because they get given advanced copies so that their review can go up on launch day, or for any other reason, it doesn't mean that the reviews are biased, unlike you. It pains me to read below, maybe one day I'll, I will have the app and my idea about it will change, since your video title is Why I Am Not By An Enigma by Christian Grace. It's all just a mess, incredibly upsetting to say the least. And then Christian gives him the link to the full tutorial. Please have a conscience about how you've gone about this and the impact it has had on me. From literal financial loss to severe damage to my mental health, and I can attest to that. Having poured genuine love into this project nine to five every day for over a year, regards Christian. And you sent the email to initiate that conversation six days after you posted your video. I'm guessing because maybe, I'm hoping that you, you, you started to get a conscience if you didn't think about it. But you're a health practitioner. You should be aware of the effects you can have on people's mental health by doing vindictive things. His reply, I understand perfectly. Sometimes we make mistakes, although the damage is done. But the only thing I can do to fix this would be to delete the video. And I will buy the app this afternoon to really see how it works. I am very sorry for the inconvenience. He sent those emails on the 8th of September. Today is the 1st of October. Over three weeks he's had to simply remove the video like he said he would, or issue an apology, or correct the false information that he's yet again been spreading. And he hasn't even done that. And I checked with Christian this morning, he has not bought the app. And he knows the trauma he's causing to Christian Grace as a medical health practitioner. 
Now, I don't know about you, but I'm a man of my word. Because I learned very, very long ago that if you are in the gutter, you've got no money, you've lost your house, your friends, your family, the only thing you can keep that's worth any value is your word. And if you don't have your word, you have nothing. Christian responded, Hi David, deleting the video is somewhat an olive branch, but it doesn't explain to the 3,000, which is now almost 5,000 plus people who watched it and took your advice that you feel any different about the product. I just wish you were a little more well-informed, seems to be a running theme, about everything before doing something like this. I wish you had reached out to me, firstly to have had me perform it properly for you so you could have experienced it, and secondly because I would have gladly given you the app to review and even helped walk you through it if you needed guidance. My heart is in the right place when it comes to creating and releasing magic. It's such a shame a stranger would do this to me. David responded, I understand you perfectly. Don't worry, I'll fix it. There's something bigger to be read from that email there. The guy, again, is saying one thing, but doing another. Judge somebody by their actions, not by their words. Because he calls himself unbiased, because he says he's going to delete a video, because he says he's going to be an honest reviewer, it's funny how he does the exact polar opposite of everything he says about himself. You can like me, you can not like me. You can buy my product and think it's terrible. You can buy my product and think it's good either way. But have some damn respect for yourself. If you are going to this guy, praising him for being an authority, for being unbiased, being honest, judging by what he does, fact check him, and we know he doesn't get his facts right. Question whether he's unbiased, he's not. Think, does he follow up on the promises he makes? Does he practice what he preaches? And speaking of practicing what you preach, I've said this for a very, very long time. My belief is, and this is gonna upset a lot of my friends who are magic reviewers, your magic review is only worth a certain amount in value if you haven't performed the effect, right? Take David, not practicing decks. Your review gets more value if you have, and even more value if you show that you can perform the effect. David agrees with me. In response to a question about magic reviewers on a forum, these are David's own words. Someone said, does the reviewer actually use this product? Do they have any history of using it or did they simply just unbox it and throw together a promotional video based on their assumptions? His response is, you can tell by seeing if they can actually perform the effect in their own hands. Do they demo the effect or show you a live performance in the real world? And then in answer to the question three, which the guy had, you asking specifically what credential does the reviewer have ties to this last bit. If they can show you the effect in their own hands, then obviously they have the right to judge it, review it, talk about it, recommend it, etc. That's what matters. Because if they can't perform the effect or aren't using the effect, then why are you even listening to them? These are David's own words. He says, why are you even listening to reviewers that are not performing or using or showing you proof that they can do the effect? His own words. Think about the Enigma review. Think about the Dex review. Or oh, it's not a review for Enigma. It's why he wasn't going to buy it. And then he says he's going to buy it, which it means he's lying again. Think about the other reviews that he's been scathing about to people that he's got a bias towards. To stand there in front of thousands of people to say they're unbiased, they're honest, they come at things from an objective standpoint. The guy has literally unqualified himself from his own review channel. And just as I'm talking about him reviewing and not even doing his own factual research. There's an offhand comment he makes in, in his Dex video where he says, uh, when he's talking about nobody using the other routines, which they publicly are, he says there's a uh, the ED seat routine. Nobody's gonna use the ED, ED seat routine because it's inferior. There's a routine that uses Craig Petty's ED seats that you're not gonna use that, why? Because ED seats is an inferior routine that you're not gonna use anyway. Um, and so that's a routine that no one's going to use that. First of all, all you need to do is take a look at the reviews. Regardless of the controversy on the crediting, the reviews with the privacy protection on there, which means from verified buyers that have actually bought this and performing it, the reviews are outrageously good. And it's because it's a fantastic effect. But he wouldn't know that because he says this himself. These are David's own words. He says uh, seven months ago, regarded the EDC effect, as I mentioned, I don't own or doesn't own it. 
goes on about why he doesn't like it, and finishes with, my spectators are not stupid. I wouldn't do this if it was free. David's own words, he doesn't own EDC, right? <laughs> but yet, yeah, he's leaving a review of it, in a review video, saying to you that it's inferior and it's terrible. Remember what he said earlier, where he said the reviewers you should watch, the ones who have the products and have used them and performed them and tried them out, yet he doesn't own it to give a review. I have said this before, and Craig Petty especially even does this, I make sure that when I'm going to, I don't do reviews, I perform tricks to see what a lay person's reaction is like. There was one trick in particular which I thought was going to set the precedent for gauging for the viewers at home to under, for an understanding level of where Kaylee was at. And it was a perfect pen by John Cornelius. I thought it was going to be a terrible trick. I didn't. I always thought it was like a subpar, not a subpar trick, but it wasn't, it didn't get me excited. And to this day, out of like the 50 odd episodes we've done, it's still in Kaylee's top five. Which to me is bizarre because I was going to use that to set like a pre like a baseline. And that's the best way to do it because you never know what an ef what how good an effect's going to be until you actually try it out. So the audacity to say an effect is inferior and that your audience are not going to like it and you've never tried it and you don't even own it and you preach to other people that reviewers should own and try the effects themselves if you're going to watch their review channels and then to come out and say something like that, you lack any credibility in this field. But I do agree with one thing. From your own evidence, your spectators are not stupid. I don't know about you. I'm a terrible performer. He even complains in his review that I don't perform to, to spectators on the streets in Miami with decks. Because I'm a terrible performer. I am very, very public about that. It's why I'm very confident with my own wife. I'm no good at performing. I might even wear that like a badge of honour. But he says his spectators are not stupid. And he admittedly has 25 years of experience. Let me show you the proof that his spectators really are not stupid from his own videos. In this video he's performing the cups and balls. He's titled it as Heckler as if this guy is just trying to be a heckler. And he does a move really badly. It's something, one of the routines he's practiced quite well from what he talks about. Um, the guy doesn't heckle him, he just points out that the ball's in his hand because he didn't do it very well. Three, one, two, three. Okay, look, went right through the, right through the cup. <laughs> now, watch carefully. That's a routine he was happy to upload publicly to the internet. In this performance, he performs his own created card at any number to a participant. And as you can see, they almost don't even realize he's there. Uh, queen of spades? Queen of spades. That's it, the queen of spades on the number that you called your card. <laughs> In fact, the comments point this out for him and someone says, I'm fascinated by her almost total lack of response. Any theories? He says, she's seen a lot of magic. My wife's seen a lot of magic. A lot of my friends seen a lot of magic. I'm not a very good performer, but I, <laughs> I don't think I get a reaction like that. But again, his spectator is not stupid. So maybe, you know, she just understood how it worked. I found this video, this is another video he's had to share, performing to kids. He does a day one standing move that every magician, especially with 25 years of experience, should be able to have down flawlessly, especially when performing for children. A false transfer of a sponge ball. If you've ever bought a magic book or a magic DVD or VHS or learned from YouTube, you'll understand that the sponge ball false transfer is one of the day one basics. And yet this young kid watches him do it, and it's hard to hear because he puts weird dance music over a lot of his videos. I which is, I don't know, personal preference. But the kid goes, I seen you and put it in your hand. The last one goes visually? I agree, that. that's different. That would be that. That's a bad key. All right, watch here for this house. Well, it's a I thought it was a good one. All right. Wish the sleeping cards go up those, right? That's what I thought it was. It's a good one. Well, I thought it was a good one. All right. Wish the sleeping cards go up those, right? That's what I thought it was. Now I'm not showing you the videos that he's chosen to upload to the internet to be mean or to in some way embarrass him. He's, he's happy for these to be out publicly. I think it's okay for you to watch them. But there's a bigger message here, which is this guy is complaining about incredible pieces of magic, giving reviews on products he hasn't even tried or performed, telling people he's a self proclaimed expert in the field, he's unbiased, he's honest, his spectators love his magic. But the only proof we've ever seen is that, at best, and I'm not saying this 
to be mean. If he was to be graded on the performances that he's shared publicly, he would be graded as an amateur magician. So look, watching back David performing live, it does make me understand as to why he is so slow with the cheetah. But there's a bigger overarching general point here, which is, and these are fundamentals of magic. Good timing is better than rushing, and being precise is better than flashing. So, for example, with an index like Dex or any good, good fast index, you can get the card into palm immediately. But as I say time and time again, don't keep your hands out your pocket, keep them in your pocket, as Banachek says. When the timing is right, you bring it out. When they break tension, when they relax, bring the card out. That way you're not rushing, you have good timing, and by being precise, you won't flash. Of course, these are the absolute basic fundamentals. And if someone is struggling not to flash a sponge ball, or not to flash a ball in the hand from the cups and balls routine, if, that's, if that is something beyond someone's ability level, then, then it's not the problem of whatever effect that you're performing, whatever you choose to use, whether it's a coin in a shell, an index, whether it's a chop cup or cups and balls in the sponge ball routines. The problem isn't the prop, the problem is the performer. So go back to basics, get the fundamentals under your belt, and then if you really want to give your opinion on something, you can come at it from an informed and tested point of view. Another small odd thing that he did, which just goes to show how biased he is and how desperate he was to set a narrative, in the nine hours of tutorials, there's one moment in the tutorial where I hadn't reset decks, and I pull out an incorrect card, and we decided to leave it in the tutorial. He uses that one instance out of the entire instructional to say that Dex is not accurate and that I can't even do it myself. Just know, as an honest individual, we knew about that, we left it in there because we didn't want to deceive anyone that if you don't reset it, it can go wrong. And we showed nine hours footage, bearing in mind, filming for 12 hours a day, five days straight in Miami when I was jet lagged coming over from the UK. We started filming the very next morning. And after all of that, we shot uh, 12 hours a day, roughly, condensed it down to nine hours, as you can all see. One mistake, and we kept it in on purpose to show you that we're human and honest, and he's picked that out to highlight that Dex is inaccurate. And I think that says a lot more about him than it does about Dex. This is an adult man. An adult man, a medical practitioner, doing things like this. We live in a world of disinformation where people don't have credentials, people don't have authority, they don't have the knowledge or the skills and ability, yet they're so vocal about everybody else around them. When it comes to magic reviewers, you need to think, can this guy back up what he says? Does he say one thing yet do another? Does he have an ulterior motive? Does he tell lies that are provable in his videos? If any magic reviewer does, does any one of those things, you shouldn't watch them. If they don't perform the effect or haven't performed the effect yet are willing to throw it in the bin. If they literally make up lies about a product. If they come at you telling you their spectators are not stupid and they've got 25 years experience, yet when you watch them perform you think, do better. If they're coming at reviews from a biased standpoint with a vindictive lesson to teach someone, then you don't want to give these people the time of day. More than ever, it's important. Check your sources, check your facts, and try and think about what the agenda is. I sound like I'm making some sort of weird political movement statement, but this is the magic realm, and this is really where it gets sad. I've had Christy and Grace on the phone to me in tears, literally in tears about the vindictive nature of what this guy's video did. I, myself, I suffer from alopecia through stress, this guy's a medical practitioner, and he's spending his time making horrible videos. Whether you think he's truly unbiased because he picks a product apart, whether you think that or not, the proof is he's lied about stuff in the past, and he's lied about stuff recently, and he's doing it to gain views on YouTube, which is something he thinks is abhorrent, or he's actively against as people trying to get views. Yet yeah, there he is doing it himself, and masking the reasons, pulling the wool over your eyes, expecting you to tell him it's sunny outside when it's pissing down with rain. I could literally go on and on and on. This is my entire list, actually, of all the notes, of all the falsehoods from the video. I don't know if you can see this, right? The 10 things that I've pointed out are the 10 provable lies. 
But there's some really stupid things he said in the video too. As an example, he says, these guys only perform with their hands in their pocket the whole time. If you're using an index, you should make an excuse to put your hand in your pocket and take it back out again. He literally didn't watch the performance mindset section. He did not watch the performance mindset section. First of all, if you have an index and someone names a card and you put your hand in your pocket and back out again, that's stupid. Secondly, if you're performing an effect with one card out in the open and you're expected to make an excuse to put a sharpie out, pull a sharpie out of your pocket or a deck of cards out of your pocket and it's a one card effect or an effect with an envelope, that's also stupid. I, as you have seen on my YouTube channel for the last two years, stand with my hands in my pocket anyway. That's literally how I operate my body, whether I'm doing coin magic, card magic, mentalism, it's how I stand. And he thinks that's bad practice for using an index. Imagine me suddenly not standing in the position that I normally stand in because I have an index in my pocket. And he's giving you advice. This person is giving you advice on how to perform your magic. Unqualified. But maybe look, maybe maybe you, you think that uh, me keeping my hands in my pocket is it, a dumb thing and it's a, it's a not tested thing or there's, there's no people that have any experience with this. So um, I actually refer to the greats when it comes to topics of this discussion. Uh, specifically in this case, Banachek, uh, one of the world's best ever mentalist, greatest living mentalists. He says specifically in his size series, when it comes to pocket writing, if you're gonna hide anything being done in your pockets, whether it's an index or pocket writing, then it's important that you establish your hand in your pocket long before you start to perform. Other people talk about this like Peter Turner and Danny Diortes, who called something painting it red. If you have a marked deck, toss it out to the audience and say, check the deck's not marked. If, if you've ever done that, you'll know they don't bother because you're just being so upfront about it. Danny Diorta says the best false shuffle for a stacked deck in the world is to take the stacked deck and toss it on the table and let it spread out in front of you. He literally says that's the best false shuffle in the world. And the same is said for indexes in your pocket. Think about this from a layperson's point of view. If you're suspicious of somebody having something in their pocket, they try to direct your attention away. When people don't have anything to hide, if they're not thinking, oh, my, my conscience is telling me to hide the thing in their pocket, they wouldn't put their hands in their pocket because people who are not guilty shouldn't act guilty. It's a really important lesson to take. The more experience you have of actually doing this stuff, the more you understand that it's not just about fooling your spectators on a surface level, at a base level, it's about going deeper into the psychology of why these things work and, and how you should move with your body and how you should utilize that with your audience. So look, don't take my opinion on the matter. Don't take David's opinion on the matter. Take on the opinion of the great forefathers that come before us. So yeah, it's really embarrassing that I've had to make this video. I hope people listen to me at the start and haven't watched this video. I hate to show this side of myself, the defending side of myself, standing up, having some integrity and having to do this to somebody else and expose them. He could have just made his review and be honest. I know he's vindic done vindictive things in the past. I know he's lied in the past, but no one's gone through the pain and effort of having to shame him like this. I didn't want to do it. I read a book called How to Win Friends and Influence People years ago by Dale Carnegie, one of the most popular books of all time. You've all probably read it. My favorite section is the story of Abraham Lincoln that when he's annoyed, he would write a letter to the person he was annoyed at and sit on it for 24 hours. When he died, they found a, they found a Ottoman filled with these letters he'd never sent. I try to practice this. I want to come into this world and spread positivity. I've always been told you should leave the world in a better place than you found it. I don't want to come on and make hateful videos, tell lies in videos, be vindictive, biased, and dishonest to people in my videos. I don't know what that brings to the world. If you're being honest about a product, you can say you don't like it. If you're being vindictive about a product, you lie about it. All the people on his channel that have left comments supporting him, agreeing with him, and literally believe in the lies he's told them, Imagine this. Imagine I go to court. I'm defending someone who told me they did not murder someone. I'm bombshell in the middle of the trial. It turns out there's a video of them and they did murder the person. DNA, black and white, camera, fingerprints, smoking gun, proof. The only person that's been made a fool out of would be me. And when you believe his lies, you're being made fools out of yourselves. And not just the people in his comment section are being made to look like fools. But those people are then going on to other people's videos and spreading the wrong information based on what they've been told by David. For example, a video review went up from Tyler Lunsford yesterday. 
in the comment section is a comment from somebody called at Nine Pine Zine or Nine Pine Zine. An amazingly positive review given that the index doesn't actually carry a full 52 cards. 48 from what I hear. How many prototypes? Blah, 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 blah. 48 from what he hears. And we've just proven, again, that the aces were flawlessly indexed if you want them. We personally don't think you should use them because if somebody names an ace, then they'll think that you force them, but it's up to you. The aces work perfectly and actually better than any other cards in the decks, as we proved in the video. And yet because of David, people are going around spreading his false information as if it's their own and they're being made to look like idiots. And I feel sorry for those people. And I don't mean that in a condescending term. I don't mean that like I'm pitying them or patronizing them. When I was really, really young, people told me things and I just flat out believed them because I didn't know any better. And then when I realized that I'd been lied to, I felt like an idiot. I know what it's like to be in these people's shoes and they have to go through that now because of someone like him. But I don't hold it against any single one of you that has been deceived by David at Unbiased Magic Reviews. And also I do want to say a massive thank you to the people that I don't know that have supported me in his comment sections by saying they disagree with him, they've got decks, they love it and they use it. Unfortunately, he's deleted so many of those comments, but luckily they screenshotted them and they've shared them on social media and in different places. So you can go and check those out. It's just really sad that somebody who claims to be so honest is being so deceptive to create their own echo chamber to fit a narrative. But again, we already know his MO by this point. It's just quite sad to see. My grandmother, rest in peace, always used to say this, I'd rather have 10 thieves in the house than one liar. Because with a thief, you know they're gonna steal. But with a liar, you can never trust them. So with that being said, I want you to ask yourself one final question. After looking at the facts, after looking at the evidence, look at all the proof and take everything in and mull it over, and ask yourself, is this man honestly an unbiased individual? If your answer is no, this person is biased because he is, then he's lied to you. And if he lied to you once, he's lied to you twice. And he'll keep lying to you because he can't be trusted to not lie. I've gone on long enough. I think you understand the picture as it is. So I'll finish by saying this. Thank you so much for your time and patience. Time is the most valuable commodity we could ever have. and We don't have enough of it. So I appreciate you making it this far in the video and listening to everything I've said. So you're probably asking yourself, what can you do right now to stop this from happening in the future? How can you prevent someone like this perpetuating this toxic behavior? And the sad matter of fact is, is that you really can't. These people won't stop. So I'm not gonna stand here and tell you to go and unsubscribe from his channel or tell you to not engage with him in any way. This is the stuff that he's looking for to incite the anger to get people riled up. If you still subscribe to him, keep subscribed to him. If you comment on his channels and you disagree with him or agree with him, keep doing all of the above. Nothing's gonna stop him, nothing's gonna change. But what I don't want from this video is any more negativity to be out there in the world. Please do not go and be abusive to him. Do not go and leave horrible comments on his channel. Do not go and try and do anything destructive to harm this person. They're already harming themselves enough as it is. And who knows, it's very, very unlikely, but this person may feel an ounce of remorse for what he's done to me, Christy and Grace, and many other people that he's done scathing videos to and he might issue an apology. Who knows, maybe we'll be waiting for that apology as long as Christian Grace is waiting for him to fix the situation that he said he would. And for me personally, unless that day comes when he does offer an apology and takes back all of the stuff that he made up, then this is the last I will speak on this matter regarding David from Unbiased Magical Views. So if he makes some sort of response and tries to twist the narrative again and make more things up and call my reputation into question, I will never see it. So David, if you're watching this, you can waste your time trying to respond, or you can be a man, you can do the right thing, you can own up to it and say sorry. I'm sorry you want to see this. Fortunately, I have the best subscribers in the world. You're good, you're positive, you're honest. 
keep being you, stay awesome. Remember, do not bow down to false idols. I'll see you all really, really soon in the next tutorial. Peace.